Damn, Bob, where'd you find this? Find this. Happy Monday, everybody. Yo. Uh, are weird things here in just a minute? Both of us, Bryce, have uh, monitors in our ears, so okay. I, I, I couldn't tell if you didn't he hear me or... <laughs> I probably did. I have the, these uh, These came with the new, like, very isolating yeah, the, 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 that the I like. Ceiling. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the middle monitors, uh, I, I don't know if they're... I know we sometimes turn it oh, off I can turn it on, on purpose, but yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Hello, everybody. We're going to start the Weird Things podcast here in just a few minutes. How's everybody doing? Holy crap. That weather today. Uh, 50 degrees, zero miles per hour wind, not a cloud in the sky. Too cold for me. Oh, chef's cold. kiss. Perfect. Like <laughs> en enough, enough that as you're walking around, your back is warmed by the sun, but your front is cold. Oh, it's the best. Best. Like a space crash. That was that was that was such a great dismissive moment from Bryce. That was just <laughs> just a just an awesome like just a, 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 a Lucille Bluth energy on like too cold for me. Like just one one of my favorite moments in all of Arrested Development is Lucille Bluth just saying like I love all my children equally, and then the cutaway to her like mid sip at lunch just a apropos of nothing i don't care for job like, <laughs> and that's that's that that, that that lazy dismissal of well, i know it's so hot that everybody sweats through their uh, you know face for 90 percent of the year in texas too cold too cold <laughs> so given the context of your background justin uh is it is it that you got kicked out or you finally have converted that storage container into the perfect time any home <laughs> uh no we are on a a uh, a working vacation so i've i've kind of like slashed my schedule to only like weird things and night attack and and the px3 stuff that i can do whenever and uh we have holed up at a hotel in southern california for which we're just gonna order postmates from different restaurants than we do when we are at a slightly larger apartment in Northern California and order from the same five places. So are, are you going to go anywhere or is just the being somewhere else? Nope. The, the, the literally treasure? just being somewhere that's not our place is uh, the only reward. And uh, there is a pool that nobody is at. And so uh, it's going to be warm for the next two days. That's nice. Otherwise, it's literally just ordering from different places. But this was the idea that we we kind of had uh, after the election just to get out of just to kind of break the the, the fishbowl. Uh, uh, I would love to imagine that shortly before the financial decision was made to go on vacation, somebody said something to the effect of. <laughs> It's not like Moderna is going to come out with a study saying they've got a 95% effective vaccine. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, 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 boy, howdy. Uh, a lot of billionaires. We really use that, we, we we really use that vaccine. <laughs> come on in. Come on in, vaccine. Any old time. Congratulations, Illuminati. You're going to get immune. Oh. <laughs> Oh, you know what the cool thing yeah. about the Moderna That's one is? That's why they're called the is, immune and naughty. Sorry. Immune yeah, and naughty. The Moderna oh, one can the be immune stored. immune and naughty. Sorry. Okay, I'm done. Yeah, the the Moderna one can be stored in a refrigerator. The other one had to be kept, like, super cold. Yeah, yeah that one was, yeah. like, dry ice yeah. level. Yeah. Yeah. 
but yeah, the so it looks like uh, worms. It's like ten million or twenty million people are going to be able to get it within, uh, you know, a, a, a couple weeks of of them uh, approving it. That's and then past that, All it's like a of... billion next year. All I can think of is like the Eddie Murphy routine. I got McDonald's. I got vaccine. <laughs> I got vaccine. You're like, this is a vaccine too, made made with yeah. bread and a giant meatball. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Meanwhile, you don't need a vaccine. vaccine. We've got we've got vaccine at home, and it's like dirt. And, <laughs> the vaccine uh, at home uh, is yeah, I'm exactly. Oh, getting oh, COVID like Brian did. God, so, <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah, right. It's like, it like, hey, man, you're just as immune either way. Uh, man, uh, but, but you're not kidding. Imagine being somebody on the inside at Moderna watching that Pfizer announcement, being like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, let me roll the dice on our numbers. Uh, Oops. Oops. Turns out we win. Sorry, more effective, uh, way more convenient. Uh, before we begin, uh, Andrew and Justin, can you both just really quick reconnect on the Opal? Just disconnect and reconnect for me. I want to also reconnect sure. with each other. I feel like a rift between the two of you. It'd be nice if you can. By the way, uh, everybody listening, everybody in the chat. Hello, everybody in the chat. Hey uh, guys, can you come up um, with the, right. uh, uh, can you hear uh, me? Yes, we can. Uh, 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 if you come up with a fun idea for what we should na name the episode of the podcast we're about to start recording, uh, please use the exclamation mark S command to submit, to suggest it. I already know the title of this one. Oh, oh yeah. Ooh, okay. Well, yeah. everybody make your guesses then. Put your wagers in. Yeah. <laughs> and it's in a sealed envelope <laughs> above the podcast. We should have like a bang S and a bang B. And the bang, uh, sorry, uh, bang B sounds like something else. Um, yeah. yeah. But but basically like a, a bet. We should uh, have a bang B. And then so you know that we're in the United States, there should be a U.S. right afterward. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bang B dot U.S. <laughs> oh. All right. Uh, you guys want to start uh, the weird things back? Heck yeah, yep. man. All right, then, Andrew, I'm going to catch you in, in three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello, friends. Mr. Brian Brushwood. Mahoy, as George Washington once said. And Bryce Castillo. Ah, that's me. Hello. Hi. Which, ironically, Gentlemen. George Washington also said once. <laughs> yeah. These are facts. This is why you tune into this show for all this wonderful information. <laughs> I want you to imagine we're walking through the Japanese countryside. Okay. Now, uh, untamed mm. or like perfectly sculpted Zen garden like? Untamed, Brian. Oh. Untamed. Okay. You know, there's there's a going up a hilly path because you know Japan's you know, got a lot of hills. It's beautiful. Of, it's God's, serene. Godzilla's running around. Close, Brian. You <laughs> hear a rustling in the woods. <laughs> oh, no. And you hear a growl. No. <laughs> and lo and behold, it's a bear. A I, Japanese bear. I was about to say, I there there are moments in your life when you realize a thing that you never ever took the time to question. Um Never pause to think about whether or not there are bears in Japan. In fact, that would be a really good gotcha question. I'm going to ask a cop next time I get pulled over. <gasps> Excuse me, officer. Uh, uh, I was pondering the existence of bears in Japan. And that's when, like... True or false? <laughs> that's 200 when, points. Yeah, that, that's, when, that's, that's when his programming kicks in, like the uh, Manchurian candidate, and he just lets you off. <laughs> so... There are bears in Japan, and apparently there's 152 bear attacks a year. I would Up imagine to, like, they're last very, very polite. Yeah. Or perhaps. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think that, that I mean, I guess that's that's an element of, of Japanese culture that is uh, a kind of secondary to our, our, our Western-focused, you know, city-centric idea of you know the, the the big cities in tokyo but obviously there's a lot of a, a ton of countryside I, I i wonder like what is the archetypical like japanese 
mountain man or like Japanese hillbilly or 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 frontiersman. Uh, I mean, if we're talking about kind of a stylized archetype, it would be I, I would just imagine Mr. Miyagi. Imagine Mr. Miyagi, but chopping wood. That's that's what I would imagine. But no, I mean, like, yeah, but is there is there for the people who are getting attacked by bears? Like, is there a different version of Japanese truck nuts? Like, like in, in the same the people who are getting attacked by yes. bears in America? Like, I, I that's what I want to know. I want to know these this culture here. I lived in a rural part of Japan and you did get people who were more, you know, farm workers, people like in, the, in that area, like there and trucks and stuff. And yeah. Kind of, Red well, uh, uh, yeah country music is huge in japan like mm -hmm. there's uh uh that was like, like two of the biggest expansion areas for country music was japan and canada because canada as soon as you go further north it's basically the deep south so i'm, I'm still trying to a... forget that i heard the phrase japanese truck nuts but uh, sorry <laughs> so you here you live in you're in japan you're in a town you had 157 bear attacks a year Problem is bears yeah. will actually wander into town, go into garbage cans, things like this. Steal your cause jobs. problems. Yeah. So what do you do? What do you do? You gotta stop the bears from coming into town. But you love bears, you love na nature because that's part of your culture. You you don't ha treat it as an either or, you try to find a way mm. to sort of work with nature. So what do you do? From what I understand, like the number one defense against bears is some kind of like capsaicin related spray. So I'm gonna assume mm. that you spray Everything except for um, uh, 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 telecommunications jobs with capsaicin, and then they're forced into that market. Right. So, yeah, I, I would imagine that you want to just keep them away from your trash and stuff. So maybe like feeding your them schools. in another place, like just so they are physically, they now are trained to know that there is food in another place and they're not straggling over to slash your children in the face at, at, at their rural uh, uh, one room schoolhouse. Ooh, you know what really well, remember, pisses them off? Hold on. You know what really ticks off those bears? What? Starting forest fires. Different Don't kind of bear. Different it. kind of bear. So steamed. Different, different <laughs> kind of bear. Different kind of bear, Brian. Sorry. It's different bear. Yeah. It's different. It's yeah. different. And, and, and quite honestly, your blind spot culturally is a deep mark on this show you know <laughs> yeah. the fact that you I, that you assumed that you're you're heterogeneous united states centric view that all bears <laughs> love so stop forest fires so, <laughs> I so it turns to... out japanese bears love forest fires they love have them. entire oh, psas yeah. where they're well, you know like like leave your matches out everywhere it's me <laughs> japanese smoky bear <laughs> what they don't like what bears Wait, smoky don't bear like? is the actual name of the bear smoky the bear uh only came up uh came up uh i found the this out because of a marketing podcast that I listened to uh, because uh, somebody did a folk song and they needed a, a, an additional beat. So they added the word, the Smokey Bear's name has always been Smokey Bear. It's never been Smokey the Bear. Can we, is this the time to talk about how bad animals are at naming last names like Bugs Bunny? Yeah, right? Roger Rabbit, yeah. Smokey Bear. Like, are, yeah. are we all supposed to be for Bear's last name Bear? I agree. You know what? Let me take a moment. Take it from me. Howard Human. It's not yeah. cool to reduce somebody to their last names, <laughs> my species. Wait a minute. You're Howard Human? Yes, I'm I am. I'm Doug Human. Ah, Doug <laughs> Human. I, are we related? Of, of the, of the uh, world humans? <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, apparently our nomenclature would suggest so. <laughs> so this is Japan. Japanese bears, you know what Japanese bears don't like? English. Japanese wolves. Really? Jesus. Now, now we're I want talking. You, I want you to imagine the most Japanese solution possible to this. Okay. The, the, well, I mean, the, just the, to the, unleash are... fifty thousand wolves around a schoolyard. There are two stereotypes that I am feeling. One is to go ridiculous, um, kind of, kind of uh, anime manga kind of uh, Street Fighter 2 over-the-top combat thing between a wolf and a bear, which, by the way, I would I would pay a significant amount of pay-per-view for. The other is to lean into That's the stereotype of, 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 uh, of, of introversion and politeness. Um, 
they wouldn't do something as gauche as like live streaming interactions between wolves and bears, would they? I would think the most Japanese way possible is to design a very comfortable bear friendly toilet. And then right that as the bears to them. were in having, bear, it just oh, plays what sounds like Chewbacca bear. noises. It's like, oh, yeah. oh. and they're like, and they don't know, they don't know what those buttons mean either, but they're hitting all of them. Like I did when I went to Japan and then just magical things are happening to your butt. And then next thing you know, as they're at their most centered and calm, ah, wolf right in their face. And, yeah. and, and they're, they're never going to come hear that school ever again man. i was Bryce, gonna show say, the photo i went before oh. you do i was gonna suggest bear karaoke but i realized it's more fun to say bariochi so i'm just gonna throw that out there There we go okay yeah it's, it's smart a good dj by the way that bariochi bariochi right. yeah so we've got a still image here of uh the solution used here in japan ready three two one boop Jesus Christ! <laughs> I swear to God, if you, if, you, if you go to another shot and there's a fancy toilet, then I'm asking for ten dollars from all of you, and not just the host. We need, I need everybody watching. We need somebody to describe this to our audience. I, mean, I, I was unprepared. Like in a million years, in a million years, this is not what I would have come up with. This is a. So, uh, uh, yeah, just because I, I know what this is, Justin. What do you think? This okay, is? so what I would what I would suggest is that this is like a scarecrow, but instead of a man being haphazardly put together with straw, <laughs> it's a terrifying, eyes glowing red wolf. I mean, to, to be honest, it's a prop that belongs in the front entrance of a haunted house, right, with the glowing eyes yes. and everything. Yes. A teeth bared, its its face rippling with anger or wizened rage. Like it's a very skinny body, and I I would imagine it's mechanized because it looks it looks like something like Brian said that would be in front of a haunted house. You've heard of of Care Bears? Uh, meet the Scare Bear. It scares yes. bears. Oh, I was gonna say it and it's a wolf. Bears. Yeah, it scares yeah. bears. This scare one is bear called wolf. Monster Wolf. Uh, yeah, that I'll tell is you what, awesome. They, they nailed it. They nailed it on the name. Like that—that that is one shot, one kill. Yeah, that—that that is that is done. You're done brainstorming. Yep. You're looking now, at that some bitch. How, how effective is this? Uh, because uh, this is where the economist to me uh, pops out. Where it's just like, like, like for the dollars spent, how many fewer <laughs> bear podcasts does everybody have to sit through? Let's watch a video and then you decide. No, You're there's a, bear. a video. There's a video here. Woo! This is from our friends at the Telegraph. This is Robot Wolves. <laughs> Japanese I pause, 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 pause. Justin, Justin, can you? <laughs> Please explain what we just So it is literally saw. in, it is in a field. It's got a uh, uh, speakers under it. Yep. I, I assume it is either solar powered or there's some element flashing on its tail. It's like at a flashing uh, light. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and, and, and the wolf is just looking left to right perpetually uh, uh, uh yeah it, that's terrifying it's also lifted off the ground so it looks like it's perpetually in like mid jump uh oh man I'm, I'm pretty sure i have audio of what it sounds like uh but but i'm gonna need exactly 15 seconds All right uh so uh we okay. this, we got another another angle here it's got flashing lights in all directions oh good god all right so yeah so i guess at night it is extraordinarily visible because it is flashing fluorescent light and its eyes are growing red. And it has infrared. It's got 60 different, yeah, 60 different types of sounds. So um, I, oh, I, I, oh, but, but it, is, it is motion detected. So it is, it is there that only goes off when it, it sees something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh my God. The bear, GTFOing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, oh God. T- take, t- t- Look at this. I've so never seen a bear, a bear caught in infrared looking straight at it, and he's like, nope, it's just vanishes <laughs> if you've ever in the seen, bushes like Homer into the hedge. <laughs> if, if you've ever wanted to see a bear, nope, 
TFO. Uh, <laughs> this is the footage of it. So wow. On, on that, this... that bear that bear dives into the foliage like you would uh, in, in your first dip into the pool on a hot summer's day. Like now, it is it is with with, uh, uh, with 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 feeling that he is getting the hell away from that monster wolf. Uh, one of the curious characteristics, I mean, the glowing eyes, I believe a bear would believe, not me, a sophisticated human, but a bear might believe that, you know, glowing eyes, uh, wolf and all that. Um, the, whatever the flashing lights are, generally scary, but there appears to be what looks like a, a megaphone duct tape to the underbelly of yeah. this, of this thing. And in my imagination, I would love to believe this is all it's broadcasting. It's a better bit if I, you can see that I'm winding an air horn right now. <laughs> I, I, I kind of actually imagine it's like a very polite Japanese woman go, please, bear, go away. You're not wanted yeah. here. Leave, bear. Mr. Bear, go away. <laughs> uh, I just think it's the uh, uh, six, uh, six Flags theme. You know, with the yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. And the bears are like, no, not the bears, boss. Oh, dude, that is so metal. I am so happy you brought that into my life. Uh, and I'll tell you what, you can always remember it just like the glowing, terrifying eyes on that monster wolf. When you support this show at patreon.com slash weird things, go ahead and get the uh, custom RSS feed, get the After Things podcast before anybody else. Head on over there right now, patreon.com slash weird things. Gentlemen, we're going to play Guess the Crime. <laughs> All right. Wait, I believe what you're describing is the literal day-to-day -day job of a detective, but that's fine. <laughs> I like guess the crime. Well, usually they start with the crime and they find the suspect. I'm going to tell you the aftermath. You got to figure out what they did. Okay. All right, let's okay. go. Three men have been banned from Yellowstone Park. I'll give you more okay. information. <laughs> yeah. And it involves chicken. Not chickens. Chicken, as as like, if like some chicken, like chicken meat, chicken. Yeah. Do do we have a separate Yellowstone story? Um, did we talk about the dude that that was goofing around in that sulfur spring pond, and then whoopsie doo doo fell in, and then kind of got his whole body dissolved in there? No, that's happened. Yeah. Uh, don't, 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 don't mess, mess with nature. Uh, okay. Chicken. Uh, I'm going to guess this is a story of people messing with nature. Am, am I right so far? Yep. Okay. A man versus nature, Brian. That's one of the classic, uh, uh, conflicts that we have in, in storytelling. So here's the question, Justin is, do yes. we believe that man thought he was doing the right thing when he involved chicken, uh, with Yellowstone, or do we think... He was messing with Yellowstone by bringing out some chicken. That this was, yeah, he was in open defiance of nature by bringing some chicken tendies to Yellowstone, or or was he just happening to be attempting to co uh, uh, exist with nature when uh, that that uh, that mother Gaia really showed him what right. for? So, it. so the question is: is this is this a story of of Ian Malcolm or of uh, John Hammond or or uh, 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 or hell? Throw Sam Neill in there. I don't know. I don't John know Hammond. Doing. Is it John Hammond? Okay, so it's a John All Hammond right. story. So, so this guy's trying to push his luck. He, he knows he, that there's three guys. Like some, three guys. Okay. Three guys. Bunch of, I mean, what kind of three man group is going to do dumb stuff uh, uh, like this? I mean, I, I can't even. I can't Separate even imagine question, it. unrelated to this: Did they have a podcast? Not that I know of. Yet. Not yet. Okay, All got right. it. All right. Uh, so what were they doing, Brian? Plays. They were they were trying. Did they try to raise chickens? Were they bringing in foreign no, no, chickens? No, no, no. Uh, something about the phrasing tells me that they showed up and they uh, they brought chicken, just uh, uh, not not a, a, a proper noun, a common noun. Uh, I'm gonna guess they were gonna try to feed something in the efforts to get one creature 
but whoopsie doodle, they summon, summoned a different creature instead. So you think that they just put out a bunch of chicken and next thing you know, nature showed up in, in fuller force than they were expecting and they had a real like, they had like, a real like problem. Different on their hands. nature than they expected. Whereas okay. just like, hey man. I'll I'm gonna narrow it down. Other than the chicken, no animals were involved. All right. So they're not laying the chicken out, and it's not like they thought a coyote was gonna show up and instead it was a diplodocus. So <laughs> Think, uh, think about uh, Yellowstone. What are some things, when I say Yellowstone, what are th things you associate with it? Because it's, it's not a lot of places in the world where you could get banned for doing this. Sure. I mean, uh, I would you know, picnic baskets. Um, taking I would taking say... photos of moon over half dome that you claim were made by Ansel Adams and not you. Uh, what, is Old Faithful? Is Old Faithful in... Yeah. Uh, Yep. In in Yellowstone, having sex so, with so Old Faithful's springs. wife, so Old Faithful's like really upset. Where it's like, I literally have one adjective in my proper name. I can't believe, yeah, <laughs> that you would now that you would make now. Me... I'm just old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the uh, 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 I know, I know. At some point, I don't want to go back to the bear well, but but you said no animals. Um. It's it's not the the acid geyser that I was talking about. Wait, maybe it was. Did did they throw a chicken in that acid well and just watch it boil away? And, and they didn't have throw... twelve years bad luck. They did not throw a chicken in the acid well. Oh, that's a very careful phrasing. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Does that have anything to do with the acid well? No. Oh, okay. Does that have anything to do with the chicken? <laughs> Yes. Okay. yes. <laughs> Every um, other part of that sentence, yes. Throw, you do not throw chickens into the acid well. They, where would you throw chickens into in Yellowstone? Into Old Faithful. No, they did not. Did they blast a chicken? Uh, wait, a live chicken? Please don't say it's a live chicken. No, 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 you would have said a chicken. You said chicken. These three gentlemen, uh, Three men have been banned from Yellowstone National Park for boiling chicken in the Partock Park's hot springs. Oh, what? They, they tried to cook chicken in a geyser. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure if it was Old Faithful. They didn't say which one. I mean, can you blame them? It's like you you need hot water. Uh, so three men banned from Yellowstone. The group was found with two whole chickens in a burlap sack, which it just sounds like a a, a, a a bluegrass lyric <laughs> like <laughs> two old chickens in a burlap sack <laughs> I, I i can't decide where i'm at on the morality of this i'm, I'm gonna say that that this is them desecrating a common good because i have to imagine that uh some kind of <laughs> bacteria infection whatever but also from their perspective it's like i got chickens says need boiling water there's some boiling water right there I mean, I, I just love that, that that's Brian's first thought is just like, these guys are boiling chicken in a, in a hot spring and it's just tragedy the common, bro. <laughs> my, that's where my mind goes, right? <laughs> there's, there's <laughs> Alt, Alt Brian, the, the civil rights attorney <laughs> who is going to be defending people in court, throwing back his luxurious hair. <laughs> what we have here is a question of a, Tragedy of the Commons and the cooked delicious chickens. <laughs> uh, yeah, and and plus also it makes me realize that each person that 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 boils a chicken is only making the commons more valuable to the next person who shows up with chicken, because like it's already going to be uh, uh, uh kind of like a you know a brothy frothy uh. So wait, hold on. We need to go back. The New York Post uh, has has their story on it. Uh, uh when asked. Uh, uh, what they were doing, uh, it was make dinner uh, from Eric Roberts explaining uh, what he and his buddies were up to. And as far as who was the culinary artist, it was kind of a joint thing. By which he For means which I think we might smoked have a joint. Double meaning. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> uh, Would it be cool if it was the Eric Roberts, Julie Roberts' brother, the actor? Exactly, right? This guy can't get a break, and now he's got to go boil chicken in Yellowstone. Uh, so, yeah, it's, what, it's, what are... it's, 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 it's hard for me to, uh, the easy thing is to judge them. 
the hard thing is to judge them on a podcast. <laughs> Because if this was just us around a campfire, I'd be high fiving everyone. <laughs> but but since we're on a podcast, I'm gonna say this was a terrible. Well, I mean, I guess here's here's the question: Is that even possible? And can you cook it and have it be edible, or is there something in that hot spring that would make it inedible or gross? Or like, tasty. like were were they just? Is this a science experiment, or were they really trying to cook some stuff, or are they just glue sniffing morons who uh, got got caught because they were doing something stupid? I would guess that. Okay, most optimistic is they realize. Do you realize n there are various salts and chemicals in that uh, uh, frothy broth that have never been tasted by human beings? We have the chance to be Neil Armstrong. Uh, setting foot on on the moon like surface of Yellowstone and saying I'm but a man who's eaten some chicken and then everyone can argue about whether what they said I am a man eating chicken or I am a man eating chicken. Yeah, um, here's like like I, here's I, the I, I suspect they thought they were explorers. Here's the coverage from Gizmodo. In August, three middle aged dudes brought some big pots into a remote part of the park to make a meal for themselves and some friends and family. They set them into one of the Shoshone Geysers Basin's thermal ge geothermal hot springs and then dropped in two whole chickens, each of which they brined for a few days in double bagged and burlap sacks and roasting bags in an effort not to spread contamination. I'm not going to say they have a podcast, so they were but I will say that if they're making more mm -hmm. on Patreon than we are, then, then, we, then I've got a problem. So, so wait, so they were genuinely they were putting effort into not contaminating this and uh uh, uh were, were trying to just use it as heat they were not like like that was that was the 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 operative thing that they were using was the the the, the heat of the water and not necessarily the like brining of whatever is happening in that hot spring yeah 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 so i yeah. i i think these guys i mean look you, you got to uh, you got to draw a line somewhere, right? You let somebody, you know, uh, boil a chicken on a on a geyser. Next thing you know, that's everybody's going to be rolling up, and the food trucks will show up, and and, and you got a larger problem on your hands. So I can understand them getting punished, but I feel like these guys, as far as bad actors go, they were more responsible than we would have been. <laughs> All I, want I to know, see... but where does it end? We go dump a big carton full of hot dogs into Old Faithful and stand out in front of it with our buns waiting for them to fall into place. I mean, that sounds <laughs> very <laughs> <magical>. <laughs> uh, uh, and I, uh, Man, uh, I'm just hoping no photos come out that reveal that like one's a, a novelist, another is a comedian, another is a, 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 a teaches <laughs> magic just on YouTube. In the future. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the very hot water kills any contamination. Not necessarily. It depends which way the contamination is going from. Because you have in geysers, in old, in we found Extreme extremophiles. Files. Yeah, yeah. There's a whole research center there now because going into these deep hot springs, they found organisms that live there. As far as giving the geyser, I don't know if you can give it salmonella, but I don't think we want to create a new strain of no. you know, geyser salmonella. Name one time that a bunch of stuff all mushed up together resulted in some kind of bad virus that, you know, infected the world. Just one. No, I can't think of anything. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, one more story? Yeah. Let's do it. So this is something that you hear about in TV shows or movies where somebody says, ah, I want to go track somebody down and you go pay a bribe to somebody and they hack like the facial recognition system. And, oh, we spot this person here. We spot them there, whatever, which is just pure dystopian garbage that can never really happen. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's the kind of thing you say right before you reveal <laughs> that exactly that is happening. <laughs> In Russia, <laughs> you don't track facial, facial tracks you. Uh, apparently, in Moscow, facial recognition system can be hijacked for just $200, a report says. So you can pay somebody in Russia, and they will use the system to track you, and somebody actually paid them to see, have it tracked wherever they went throughout the city, and they got back a whole report of all the different places they responded. What, uh I'll tell you what it makes me think of is I, I've, I've been really, really shocked 
at just how fast everybody's gotten their hands on on deep fake technology right uh like like the, it was novel and strange on this very podcast just what two two and a half years ago and now well, it wasn't my book angel killer that i wrote you know, uh, several years ago but that's, uh, that's... i mean look we can't all be as visionary <laughs> uh but 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 meanwhile like like all of a sudden it's like everybody has it so I think I think the surprising part of this story is that you know for only two hundred dollars you get military grade whatever, um, but meanwhile it's like uh, we've seen that with other things as well. Yeah, yeah that's I mean the... all, 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 all all systems are fallible, uh, and and that's really the ultimate uh, uh, question with all of this technology is like, well, uh, where how secure can it be, and what happens when everybody has it. And I suppose, yeah. like, like, should it even be? I mean, like, the moment you find out that something can be done, um, uh, like, one of the examples is you watch somebody, you know, uh, flinging cards around or doing juggling or whatever, and it's like the mere knowledge that a thing can be achieved changes the landscape. And all of a sudden, it's like whoever's first takes, a you know, 100 years for somebody to be first, and then, uh, uh, and then in the next 20 days, seven other people figure out how to do the exact same thing. So, so in this case, we're, we're talking about the actual same technology that is suddenly being sold on the market. But if not that, then, uh, then, then, you know, some other outsiders would come in and make it available. Well, the idea here is they had a government system, a police system for facial recognition to stop crimes, presumably. And, that should be secure, should be whatever, but for just 200 bucks, somebody will give you access to it. And that's that's one of the big problems whenever, not to go on a political tangent, when people talk about, oh, we should mandate back doors into iPhones and oh, other yeah, stuff yeah. because we don't want the bad guys, you know, being able to keep secrets. It's like, there is a theoretical world where that makes sense. There's a theoretical world, there's an argument for that. In the real world, those things never are secure. They never work, whatever. And no, just, and we get assurances from people like, no, but this time, this yeah. time, you know, we'll, we'll do it the right way. Even though historically every time any system like that's ever been in place, it gets abused and whatnot. Yeah. But this time, uh, that's, that's, that's crazy. I mean, it, it, although I guess it's like, you know, between, the CCTV revolution that happened through the nineties and the aughts in, in, you know, major cities around the world. And, and now facial recognition is just the next step of it. Uh, it doesn't, uh, doesn't, doesn't surprise me, nor does it surprise me that it's totally insecure. And now it is just like a, 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 a trifle on the black market to pay. I mean, $200 is like, you know, a, 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 a pittance to find exactly where somebody is. Sure. Yeah. So happy thoughts, everybody. Ha! Let's go to let's go to picks. Oh man, I got a new mind reading act. All right, all right, everybody, clear your minds. Everybody, clear your minds. I got a feeling that somebody's thinking of a pick. This pick it starts with the letter A. Does anybody have a pick that's starting with the letter A? Does anyone have a pick with starting I with do. the letter like A U? Oh shucks, oh shucks, oh oh da darn, oh da oh now, did, is now. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Now I, I don't know if we're just doing the bit I, from the show where it's the cold reading bit. Don't tempt me, because I will do the whole bit. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, no, I, I have a feeling that both of us uh, uh, are going to want to shout out uh, Auntie Donna's Big Old House of Fun on Netflix. It has been an absolute joy to experience. I'm really, really digging it. Uh, yeah. You know, it's um, it's hard to objectively uh judge things where you like are are friends with people and i've i've felt the same with uh you know brian's work on on tv and andrew's work on tv or in 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 writing uh there's there's obviously so much of what you see you you see the journey up up on on a, a screen or in, in in the final form and you wonder what it's like to people with fresh eyes but uh, uh i have to say having uh, uh, known the Auntie Donna guys for a while, like, and, and seeing their live shows, seeing what they've done on YouTube, seeing what they've done with the podcast. Uh, I thought that what they put up on, on screen for Netflix was some of the most, uh, 
absurd, but like much to their form, like well structured, uh, uh, absurdist comedy that I, I don't think that a lot of people put that kind of thought into something, especially when it's as silly as uh, uh, they are. The fact that like last night, people were going back and forth on on Twitter about whether or not it's actually set in the year 2000 because they just drop and it's never a big thing. It's never a major plot point, but it's just a little consistency that they kind of put in where people will kind of get a kick out of it because they had Auntie Donna in 1999 as, as a YouTube series. But yeah, it, it, it uh, it's, it's extraordinary. It's hilarious. If you like sketch comedy, go watch it. If you uh, like absurdist comedy, go watch it. It's, it's just, hilarious to me uh it was the weirdest experience much for the same reason you mentioned um i watched the first two and a half episodes and then i watched them again then i watched them again and constantly like like i'm not crazy right like this is really funny and it's not just because i know them uh and uh, uh eventually i did make it through the the rest of them so now i have to watch all of them over and over and over and over again but uh, people were what talking, a cruel fate. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, people were talking about like how infinitely gifable all of their stuff is, which I'm very, very pleased with. Uh, there's uh, uh, never mind. Uh, uh, for Night Attack fans, there is one five second chunk where they manage to do a bit from uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's, which is Bonnie's favorite movie, and uses Bonnie's favorite word. If you know what the word is, then you will know the scene I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh yes. Which I think that I think that moment has been gift too. Yes. Or I think I yeah. see you made a gif of that in the Discord with all the other people doing so that. So good. So good. Uh but no, I was thrilled to see they were trending in uh uh Australia and the UK and, and I know all over the world. I don't know if they if, Even if they in cracked Norway? it in America. Yeah, but uh I, I do know that they are uh a a they they made something extraordinary and and I'll tell you what sketch comedy which has really had a rough road since um since it got you know, SNL <laughs> well I mean SNL is kind of the north star of of sketch comedy it will, it will kind of always be there and sometimes it shines brighter than than others but like you know uh, Key and Peele Chappelle show like those might be the last like big touchstones but uh between i think you should leave and auntie donna like uh uh netflix is is kind of become this like resurgent home for sketch comedy and and again th these are sketches that auntie donna are doing but like the uh the, the the care they give their insane world is is just remarkable like everything kind of matters which is insane when the world is as limitless as as the one that they created as somebody who is familiar both with their podcast and their live show um how which was your favorite thing new things that you saw uh uh, uh kind of kind of hardcore fan service when they reference things that were explored on the podcast or like sort of the definitive version of bits you've seen in their stage show. Like for, for me, like that execution of the Ellen DeGeneres bit was, was fantastic. And I'm so glad that it exists because if you want to get somebody to watch something, I feel like that version is more approachable than, than like, Oh wait, is this, are you going to make me watch five minutes of a live stage show that I wasn't at or something like that? Yeah. Um, for me, I can't believe that they put as much of their their podcast is very unstructured. Like their podcast is is kind of a mess, and and that's sort of why it's funny. But they put so much of the stuff that they that they came up with in in the podcast in that show and and polished it up. Sometimes a little bit, sometimes not at all. Like in in the uh, 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 example of Cowdoy, who is just a kind of stupid cowboy that is just just shows up randomly uh and never leaves the show which is very funny um but yeah it's uh uh th those were the moments where i was like i just couldn't believe it i couldn't believe that some of the characters that are are i mean 
there's they they have these podcast characters the south african sams yeah that are not really even characters they're just like accents that broden and zach do to annoy mark like and it, it's they it's, just are it turns into a sketch it, where they're literally annoying mark and so, they're not yeah, south african they, <laughs> and they're not, yeah and so it's like when as soon as they showed up i was just like how do they even translate the point? Because on the podcast, they're literally just there to ruin every attempt at his improvisation. They'll be in a scene, like it'll just be like, oh, you're a Best Buy and we need to like give you your money back for a broken phone. And they will just take every opportunity to bully Mark into other directions. And so there's, I I, I was, uh, yeah, at the, the Moogie Woogie Woogie character. But look, there's just, it's so much it's got great cameos um and uh uh uh, yeah uh did did you recognize bryce the the voice of the queen of england uh i did not uh she is the the voice of mariner on lower decks oh really yeah is she oh interesting i'm the queen of england England. yeah yeah yeah. so is she uh she, she she's Australian? Not, no, 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 no. Uh, I, I, in fact, the the majority of the time she's talking, she's very much. I mean, it's just if you close your eyes, it's just straight up Mariner from Lower Decks. <laughs> uh, only brief affectations of having an accent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, can't uh, recommend it enough. If you like uh, 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 absurdist comedy, uh, uh, very, very good. And if if nothing else, as uh, the boys said themselves on Twitter. Uh, uh, they made Ed Helms change his name on all of his social media accounts. Did you really? Which, uh, oh, that's amazing. Egg, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it didn't really change it. They egg corrected Helms. it. Yeah, they did. Yeah. That uh, was, who knew? Uh, I got a brief pick. Uh, oh, by the way, Auntie Donna's going to be on Night Attack this week, so that'll be fun. Oh. Uh, uh, I, I got a pick. Also a little bit of cross-promotion. We just started watching this for Cord Killers uh, for the It's Spoiler in Time show. And I really dug the first episode of it. It's uh, Hannibal. This will be our new uh, archive library show on Spoiler in Time. I thought this was pretty cool, uh, the first episode. Uh, kind of a weird relationship between uh, Will, who is this hyper-empathetic. Em- yeah, uh, empathic. Uh, yeah, uh, character who is kind of helping solve uh, these serial murders. And then also Hannibal Lecter is there. And the first episode is interesting because I don't, I don't know what Hannibal Lecter's role in the murder that they look at on that episode. Oh, no, no, no. I, th- I thought they made it fairly clear. Um, remember, there was a murder of one type, but then there was a murder of another type. Sure. He definitely I, did the second one. And and uh, and I do recognize that because okay. it would be very weird if he didn't have the thing yeah. in the middle of that scene. But... <laughs> Why is he? Why in the grander scope? Why is he doing that? Why is he a part of this? Why is he in on this at all? And I think this is awesome. a great thing that will be explored on Spoiler in Time oh, right. for folks who have not seen the pilot for Hannibal. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Hannibal. It was pretty cool, and it's streaming like everywhere. So uh, Netflix and Amazon and stuff. Andrew, you got a pick? I I started watching that show, and it was fun. But then it became like serial killer Tom and Jerry. <laughs> And then I'm like, I mean, I'm, you I'm know, each that. week with the kill. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Like, like what I would love to see is the documentary of like with leaked footage from the pitch meeting where somebody with a straight face says a buddy cop, but one of them's Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> like <laughs> what? Yeah. It's yeah. It's... See where it goes. <laughs> Just well, keep watching. Tell yeah. me it gets it gets to be a bit like. That I know that there's a very rabid it. community around this show in a way that I wouldn't expect. Did you for. say they're very hungry? Uh, yes, they're. They just want to consume as much as they can. They are just. Uh, yeah. It just gets they're to going. be this like every serial killer has to have their own big shtick and thing, and it just gets to be after. It's like it's basically Gotham. It's Batman. You know, here just just buckle up for you know. Just all but the clown face and Riddler costumes, or maybe some of that too. Oh, yeah, uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, but, um, but, but that's on me. <laughs> yeah, Hannibal, Andrew. Uh, I'm just gonna go. Uh, I haven't seen it. I haven't watched it, but I'll take their word on it. Auntie Donna, uh, sounds great. Glad to see that you know. Uh, you guys sure know how to pick success, so. 
God, uh, <laughs> their music is so so good too. <laughs> and I usually I usually don't like musical comedy stuff, right? Uh, but there's there's this great I because there it's Tom I I believe there Tom who's on their crew does all of their music yeah. and I, I believe it's Tom yeah uh, and it's great it's just great the the I was listening to some of uh, an episode on the car ride over here and just like pump into the credit song because the credit song is a is a banger it the really is and, and it changes and, each episode have you listened to that yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's like a it's it's a it's a uh kind of a split personality plea between please watch more but if you don't like it uh f you but also no just kidding please watch more yeah. like 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 that's the vibe every single uh credit sequence yeah. uh there we go auntie donna's big old house of fun there we go gentlemen it's been weird Wow. Okay. Alrighty, well, we'll take a few minutes here, take a take a short break, and come back for some after things. I have a thing at one. In so twenty five um, minutes. Okay. I could go either way on after things. So if we, if we're flirting with the idea of of missing a week, I'm fine with that. If we want to make it short, I'm fine with that. If we want to dive all in and make it our full time job, we can do that. <laughs> if we want to live in a after things centric universe uh, if we want to build out an after it, things I'll, MCU, I'll inform my children it's fine yeah exactly if we, we want to fly to the yeah. sun kiss it evaporate ourselves rain down as photons onto the planet be reborn as yeah i i have to bolt is Okay. All right. All right. All right. So, so okay. we'll, we'll, we'll skip this week. A real job. I'm like you. I, 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 I think we have a little bit of grace. I think we uh, we 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 get some coupons to spend. So so we'll skip this. Okay. Week. Cool. Thank you, everybody. All right. All right. Love you guys. That'll do it for the stream. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. We'll be back uh, in a few hours with a uh, happy hour. You guys are doing a happy hour. Yeah, uh, I, I'm down for it, but 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 also that's another one I'm ambivalent on. I know we got a coupon. <laughs> uh, uh, I, uh, me, me finding out that Justin's on vacation changes the dynamic. So, in fact, I'm going to call it no happy hour today. No after things, no happy no hour. No happy hour today. Okay. Yeah. No happy we'll hour. We'll see you at Court today. Killers. Court Killers will be in about uh, three and yeah. a half hours, everybody. We're going to have uh, Ayaz Akhtar, I believe, on the show today. Right home. Uh, everybody have a good rest of your good Monday. Lad. Bye. See ya.